Hi, my name is Jane and welcome to Loopy Mabel Crochet. Well, where have I been for the last four weeks, I hear you say? Yes, I know, I did say I was going to have this tutorial for you at least four weeks ago and I'm so sorry, so thank you for being so patient with me. So, if you would like to do a little bit of crocheting and make my latest design, which is this autumn, autumn rain poncho wrap, we're going to be making this one in the tutorial. So if you fancy crocheting along with me, I shall see you in a minute. Are you ready to do some crochet long last so am i so i'm going to go through the tutorial and we're going to be making this version here i thought we'd do one with three color yarns just so you can see the difference what it looks like with three color yarns as opposed to the one i'm wearing with one yarn just to give you an idea so if you fancy crocheting along with me i'm going to go over to the overhead camera and i shall see you over there Right, so today's tutorial, let's get going. These are the tools I'm going to be using today. Obviously, we need our scissors, stitch markers for highlighting the beginning and the ending of our rows, darning needles to sew in the ends. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook. And again, I'm using double knit yarn. I'm using Stylecraft Special Double Knit if you wanted to use the same wool as me. And I'm using parchment, storm blue and camel. So I'm going to start off with the parchment. Now before I begin, this tutorial is in UK terms. So obviously if you're watching from the US, you need to be aware of that. And I'm going to be working the poncho wrap in panels to make it easier. The, the wrap is worked over um, like sections or panels and it will be easier. So the first one we're going to start off with, I'm going to be using the parchment wool. We're going to start off with our beginning chain of 75 and then we're going to start and create the joining panel. I'm going to call it that. So let's begin. I'm sorry if you can hear the rain outside. It's absolutely torrential. Hope it's not too loud on the camera. Let's begin. So start off with our slip knot. So you do your slip knot whichever way you're familiar with. I do have a tutorial if you need to refer to that as well. So we're going to work our chain and we need to do 75. So I will just show you if you're a beginner, yarn over and pull through. That's your first chain. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through. So there we've got one, two, three, four chains and we need to continue on like that until we've got 75 chains. Now if you are new to crochet and you are a bit unsure of what the chains look like it's always best to, to look at them as if it's a V shape so can you see there's a top bar, bottom bar which creates a V. That is your chain so there's your first chain, your second chain, your third chain and your fourth chain there so that's what you need to be looking for so I'm going to continue now till I've got 75 chains so if you want to do the same pause the video and I shall see you when we're at 75 chains right so I've got my 75 chains so we're going to be going down and into the third chain from our hook so you just need to count back obviously that does not count as anything that's on your hook So we're going to count back. So we're going to count back the V's if that helps. So one, two, three. So we're going to insert our hook into that third chain and we're going to be working half trebles. So yarn over, insert your hook into that third chain. One, two, three. Insert your hook down into that chain. Yarn over, pull through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three and that's our first half treble. And we're just going to insert our stitch marker and that light identify when we're coming back along the other way. And we're just gonna work half treble all the way along this chain. So obviously, if you're watching from the US, it would be the half double crochet, but we're just gonna work all the way along into our chain. So yarn over down into the next chain, 
pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, yarn over, down into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. I'm just going to continue like that all the way along, yarn over, down into that next chain, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through all three. Now if you're wondering, you know, if you're struggling and you're new to crochet and you're not quite sure where you're looking at in the chain, if the V shape doesn't help, another tip that I use, I'll just take my hook out to show you, is obviously we've got the V shape of the stitch, like I said before, so it's like a little V. And if you lie your chain down flat, you have a top bar of the V and a bottom bar of the V. So if this helps, you insert your hook against the bottom bar of your V. I'll just zoom in a bit for you just to show you close up. Just a useful tip. So there are your V chains there. And when you're inserting your hook, if you look at the bottom bar of the V, that's where you're going to aim to insert your hook into that bottom bar. So I'll just show you close up. So I'm just going to yarn over and I can see I've already used that bottom bar there for the last stitch. So I'm going to go to the next bottom bar, which is that one there. And I'm going to set my hook into that chain against that bottom bar. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three. I'll do it one more time. So I can see I've worked that bottom bar there. So I'm not going to insert my hook back in there. I'm going to go to the next bottom bar, which is that one, and insert my hook against that bottom bar. It's just a useful tip, sorry, it's just a useful tip if you sometimes are struggling to see where to insert your hook, especially on the first row. So I found that quite useful, and I'll do that one more time. Yarn over down to the next bar because that bar has been taken. So down the next bar. Yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through all three. So if you want to work your way all the way along uh, to the end, work in half trebles in every stitch, and I shall, I shall see you somewhere near here, and then we'll go on to row two. So I've just got two more to do. So I'll just finish off this first row. And the last one there. And there we have our first row of half trebles and you should now have 73 stitches and you need to have 73 stitches throughout this tutorial so it might be worth every so often just counting your stitches to make sure you've got the 73 otherwise the pattern will not work. Okay so we're going to go on to row two which is exactly the same as row one. So we're going to chain one and turn and the chain one does not count as a stitch throughout this tutorial and we're going to be doing a chain one turn at the beginning of every row. So chain one and turn and then we're going to go down into that very first stitch which is there and if you want to turn your work sideways you can see your first stitch, there's your V. And there's your next one. So we're going to be going down into that first stitch. And when you insert your hook from the sideways on, you're going to be going through there and you're going to be picking up both of those Vs, both of the, the stitches on the V, sorry. So your hook should show like the two parts of the V. So if you insert your hook and you're just catching the one, that's not right. So you're inserting your hook so it catches both and you're coming out through the back. So another little tip. So just reinsert my hook and we're just going to work all the way along this row now. Yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three and we're going to insert our stitch marker. And then we'll know that is our stitch to look out for when we come back. Because they can quite easily be missed, the ones on the end. So yarn over down into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over down into the next. 
yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. So if you just want to continue, just like me, all the way to the end, and you should have 73 stitches. And I shall see you somewhere to the end of here. And then we'll go on to row three. So I'm just coming to the end of row two. So I'll just finish off. And I'll just show you how important it is to put the stitch markers in, especially if you're new to crochet. Because I've added that stitch marker in, I can see I've got one more stitch to go. And that could have been easily missed. Like, I could be easily missed, really. So yarn over, insert my hook into that last stitch. And I have got 73 stitches. So if you just want to double check that you've got your 73 stitches before we go on. So we're going to move on to row three and obviously chain one and turn. And we're going to be working trebles on this row. So yarn over down into that first stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through. And then we're going to chain one. We're going to skip the next one. We're going to go treble into the next one. So yarn over, skip one, down into the next. And then we're going to work three more trebles. So one, two, three. So we've got four there. And we're going to chain one skip one and then work another four more travels so one two three four chain one skip one work four travels so we're just going to repeat this all the way along four travels chain one, skip one, four trebles all the way along and I shall see you somewhere towards the end of here and I'll just show you how to finish off row three. So I've just come to the end and I've just done my last four trebles and if you've got the correct stitches you should have a two stitches left so I've got one and two. So again as you can see if I didn't have that stitch marker in that could be missed so that's the reason why I like to put them in. So we will come to our last two stitches, so we're going to chain one, we're going to skip that one and we're going to put one treble into that last stitch. So I'll just take my stitch marker out. Skip that one, treble into that last one. And there is row three. Now row four and five are a repeat of rows one and two. So chain one and turn and into that first stitch work our half treble. Insert your stitch marker. And then we're going to work half treble all the way along. The only difference is obviously we've got our chain spaces to remember. So we're going to work our half treble into the chain stitch because that's still classed as a stitch. So we've half trebled into the first, half treble into that chain stitch, half treble into the top of those four trebles. And then half treble into that chain space and then just continue on. So just working your half trebles into the top of every stitch and also a half treble into that chain space like so. So if you just work all the way along working half trebles into the stitches and the chain space come to the end and then you're going to chain one and turn and then work half trebles all the way along. So if I can leave you to do two rows of half trebles I shall see you somewhere towards the end of row five and then we'll go on to the diamond bobble panel. So I've just got um, two more half trebles to do on the end of row five. I'll just remove my stitch marker. 
and I'm going to change yarns so this is where I'm going to change my yarns now if you're going to continue in the same color you don't obviously don't need to do that and I'm just going to go on to my storm blue so I'm just going to bring the storm blue in let's trim this yarn I'm just I like just like to secure mine with a little bit of a knot Right, so we're ready to go on to the next panel. So we've just completed the joining panel and this joining panel, these five rows will be the ones we use in between each panel of the bobble panel and the lace panel. So this is the one we're going to be using in between. So now we're going to go on to the bobble panel and we're going to chain one and turn. And we're going to be working our bobbles, so we're going, to, we're going to have the wrong side facing us and the bobbles are going to pop through on the other side. So we're always working our bobbles that they show through on the right side and they don't show through on the front side as we're working. So into this one, the bobble panel has 13 rows, so there's 13 rows to this pattern. So we're going to go down into the first stitch and we're going to work double crochet. So that would be single crochet if you're watching from the US. And we're going to double crochet into the first one and then the following seven. So eight double crochets. So two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight so eight double crochets and I'm just going to insert my stitch marker into that first one sorry I've meant to do that and then we're going to work our first bobble so we're going to yarn over insert our hook yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through two and leave it there so it's an incomplete treble and we're going to do this four times in total so yarn over insert the hook yarn over pull through two that's twice and again three times and again four times so we should have five loops on our hook yarn over and pull through all five and then down into the next we're going to work our double crochet and that forces the bobble through on the right side and we're going to work 13 double crochets in total for this next section so we've done one so let's do 13 two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And just a quick tip as well when we're doing the bobble panel, if we did eight double crochets at the beginning, we're going to finish off with eight on the other side, on the other end of this row so if you start with eight you should be finishing with eight if we start with six we'll be finishing with six so that's another way of making sure that when you come to the end of the row you should have the same number that you had at the beginning of the row so there we've done our 13 double crochets so into the next one we're going to do our bobble so yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over work one incomplete treble do that four times in total five loops on our hook yarn over pull through and then we're going to go down and work 13 more double crochets so we're going to work all the way along 13 double crochets one bobble 13 double crochets one bobble and this should take you all the way to the end with your last bobble 
and you should have eight double crochets left to do. So if you want to work 13 double crochets and a bobble all the way along, I shall see you somewhere around about the ninth stitch and we'll finish off there, make sure we're all doing it right. So I've come to the end and I should have nine stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to do my bobble into that ninth stitch there. So one, two, three, four, yarn over, pull through, and I'm left with my eight, which is what we started with. And I'm left with my eight remaining stitches, which is what we began with, so that's correct. So eight double crochets to finish off this row one. So row two will be chain one and turn and we're just literally going to double crochet in every stitch. So insert your hook and double crochet all the way along. And this will be the same working back along the rows with the bobbles facing us. So whenever the bobble is facing you, we're just going to double crochet all the way along. So insert your hook and if it helps you when you come to the bobble, just turn your bobble there you go and you can see there is the V to insert your, your hook like so. So if you work double crochet all the way to the end, chain one and turn and I shall see you for row three. So I've got to the end of row two so I've chained one and I'm just going to turn and for row three we're just going to go down into that first stitch and work our double crochet and we're just going to do another five more so we've got six double crochets completed so six in total so we've got our six double crochets one two three four five and six and into the next we're going to work our bobble so four incomplete trebles like so. And then we're going to work three double crochets. So one, two, and three. Work our next bobble. And then we're going to work nine double crochets. So nine, one, two, three, four, nine, and then our next bobble. And then we're going to work three double crochets. One, two, and three, and our next bobble. And if you just turn your work over, you can see how our diamond is forming. So we're going to continue all the way along like so. So we're going to be working our bobble, three double crochet, bobble, then nine double crochet. So we've just done bobble, three double crochet, bobble, and we're going to do nine double crochet, bobble, three double crochet, bobble, nine double crochet. So repeat that all the way along to the end finishing with your last bobble and then you should have six double crochets to finish off with because we did six double crochets at the beginning of this row. So I'll leave you to continue and I shall see you at the end of this row. So I've just got my last few double crochets to finish off row three and I finished off with my six double crochet. So if you just want to double check that you have the right number at the end that you started with at the beginning then you shouldn't go wrong. So we're just going to chain one and turn and row four will just be double crochet all the way along. So if I can leave you just to do your double crochet all the way along and I shall see you at the end of row four. So I've just completed row four. 
and we're just going to turn now and go on to row five so chain one and turn and just before we go on to row five if you just want to double check that your bobbles are forming the diamond they're not out of sync so let's turn the work and we're just going to go down into the first stitch with a double crochet and we're going to work in four double crochets to start this row so down into the first one work one two three and four and then we're going to work our first bobble And then we're going to work seven double crochets next. So down into the next, working seven double crochets. Down into the next will be our bobble. And then we're going to work five double crochets. One, two, three, four and five and then bobble into the next and then work seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven then bobble into the next and then five double crochets and then we'll work our bobble so all the way along it's going to be five double crochets your bobble seven double crochets your bobble five double crochets your bobble and if you just turn it over you can see what it is you are creating on this row so your bobbles should be gradually moving out like so so if you find that they've come out of sync you haven't counted the double crochets correctly in between so we started off with four we did our bobble then seven bobble five bobble seven bobble five so if you continue all the way along working just like that so i'm just going to do the next bobble And then I've just done five, so I need to do seven. And then I'll do my bobble, then five, then bobble, then seven. So if you continue all the way along, and I shall see you when we get to our last bobble, and you should have four stitches left. So I've just finished my last bobble there, and I have got one, two, three, four stitches left to do, which is correct. So I'm just going to finish with four double crochets. So chain one and turn and you've guessed it, this row is just a double crochet row. So whenever the bobbles are facing us, we're just going to double crochet all the way along. So just going to insert my hook and double crochet all the way along. So I shall see you when you've completed this row. Right, so we're now going to go on to row seven. So we're halfway there, so chain one and turn and we're going to work two double crochets so down into the first and into the second and you can see the pattern forming here we started off with eight then we did six then we did four and now we're doing two and then we're going to work our bobble into the next And then we're going to do five double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to work our bobble, and I'll show you what we're making when we've done this bobble. Show you the effect. Down into the next, going to do five, one, 
two, three, four and five. And we'll just turn it over to show you what we've done. So by doing that five, the bobble, the five, then the bobble, and then the five, we've created our bobble in the middle of the diamond. So that's what that was going to create for us. So let's continue. So we've done our five again and we'll do our next bobble. A bobble created in the middle of that diamond now. And then we're going to work one double crochet. Then we're going to work our next bobble. And then five double crochet. One, two, three, four, and five. Our next bobble. Five double crochet. Our next bobble. And then one double crochet. So your work should be looking something like this. So we're just going to continue on like this, working our bobble, five double crochets, bobble, five double crochet, bobble, one double crochet. And we're going to continue all the way along until we get to our last bobble and then you should have two stitches to do your two double crochets on. So if you want to work all the way along, working five double crochets, bobble, five double crochets, bobble, one double crochet bobble all the way along and I shall see you somewhere around about here. So I've just got to my last bobble there and if I've done it right I should have two left which I do so two double crochets to finish off one and two and if you turn your work over hopefully all your bobbles should be lined up nice and evenly and you'll soon know if you've gone wrong because your bobbles will be out of sync so you just need to keep an eye on to make sure that you're making that diamond shape and the one in the middle and if it doesn't look like that then obviously you need to pull it out and make sure they are lining up. So we've come to halfway on the diamond now so for the following rows we're going to be graduating back in. We're going to chain one and turn and when the bobbles are facing us we're just going to double crochet all the way along so if you want to double crochet all the way along and we will then complete row eight and we'll then move on to row nine so I shall see you at the end of this row okay so we've just completed that row row eight and we're going to go on to row nine so chain one and turn and we're going to be going up with our double crochets now so if you notice the pattern we started off with eight then we did six then we did four then we did two so the next row now we're going to go up to four and then it'll be six and then it'll be eight so let's do our four double crochet so one two three four five six seven eight nine and then we are going to work our bobble and then we're going to work seven double crochets so one two three four five six and seven and then we are going to work our next bobble And then we're going to work five double crochets. And then our next bobble. And then seven double crochets. So you can see the pattern forming for this row. So five double crochets, bobble, seven double crochets, bobble all the way along. So five double crochet, bobble, seven double crochet, bobble. And I shall see you 
towards the end when we've just completed our last bobble and we should have four double crochets left to do. So I've just got to the end of row nine just about so I've just got to do my last bobble. And if I've done it right I should have four left and I do so four double crochets to finish off row nine. And you go to chair one and turn and as usual we're just going to double crochet all the way along for row 10 and I shall see you at the beginning of row 11. Right, so I've just completed row 10 and we're just going to chain one and turn and start row 11 and we're going to work six double crochets so so we've worked six double crochets and we're going to work our next bobble. And then we're going to work three double crochets and our next bobble. And then nine double crochets. And then our next bobble. And then three double crochets. And then, you guessed it, our next bobble. So we're just going to work this all the way along, working three double crochets, bobble, nine double crochets, bobble. So we've worked three double crochets, bobble. I'm going to do nine double crochet, bobble, three double crochet, bobble, nine double crochet, bobble, all the way along. And you should get to the end, finishing with your last bobble. And there should be six stitches left where we're going to work six double crochets. So I shall see you somewhere round here. So I'm just at the end of row 11 and I've just got my last bobble to do. So we finish off with our six double crochets. Chain one and turn and for our 12th row, we're going to double crochet all the way along. And I shall see you towards the end of row 12. We're going to chain one and we're going to turn and then we're going to finish off with our last row on this bobble panel on row 13. So I shall see you at the end of row 12. So I've finished row 12, so I'm just going to chain one and turn. And we're just going to do row 13, which is our final row of this diamond bobble panel. So we're going to work eight double crochets, eight double crochets, then we're going to work our next bobble. And then we're going to work 13 double crochets. And then our next bobble. And 13 double crochets. So we're just going to continue all the way along, working 13 double crochets, bobble, 13 double crochets, bobble, all the way to your last bobble. And you should find that you have eight double crochets to finish off with. So I shall see you somewhere towards our last bobble. So I've just finished my last bobble and I have got eight double crochets just to finish it off. So I'll just finish off this last row, row 13 of our diamond bobble panel. And I'm going to change colour here. So I just need to snip this yarn so I'll just quickly change colour. So we're now just going to go and put our joining panel as our next panel there. And you just need to complete that joining panel. And then once we've completed that, I shall see you. And then we'll go on to do our lacy panel. So I've just come to the last stitch of my joining panel. I'll just change my colour here and we're now going to go on to the next panel which is called the lace panel. So we're going to, as usual, chain one and turn. And we're going to go down into that first stitch and work a treble. And we're going to go down into the next stitch and work another treble. And then we're going to chain one 
and then we're going to work our treble two together which will be this next following stitch I'm going to show you worked over three stitches so yarn over down into the next stitch yarn over pull through yarn over down into the same stitch yarn over pull through so you should have five yarn over pull through the four so we've got two in our hook then yarn over skip your next stitch and go down into the next pull through yarn over back down yarn over and pull through so you should have one two three four five six yarn over pull through four so you've got three loops on your hook and yarn over pull through all three and that is our treble two together and then we're going to chain two one two and we're going to go down into the next stitch and do exactly the same again so yarn over pull through yarn over back down yarn over pull through yarn over pull through leaving two yarn over skip one into the next insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull through six loops on your hook pull through leaving three yarn over pull through so i'm going to do this stitch really really slowly before i leave you to work the rest of this row so we've done our chain two and we're going to go down into the next stitch so we're going to yarn over insert our hook yarn over pull through yarn over insert our hook yarn over pull through five loops on our hook and we're going to pull through the four so yarn over and pull through four Then yarn over, skip one, down into the next, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, down into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through. Six loops on our hook now. We're going to pull through those four again. So yarn over, pull through the first four leaving three on our hook yarn over pull through all three and then we're going to chain two so if i leave you now to continue all the way along working two chains and then working your treble two together over the three stitches there i shall see you somewhere towards the end and i'll show you how to finish off this row and how we go on to do the next and the few following rows for the lacy panel so i've just come to the end of this row and i've got one two three four five stitches left so you should have five stitches left so i've done my chain two i'm just going to do my last treble two together and we're joined by Jordy, so you can probably hear him purring in the background i'm trying to do a serious tutorial here and he just does not care skip one down into the next pull through pull through and we're going to just chain one here so chain one and we're going to do a treble and another treble into that last stitch so we're just going to chain one and turn now that after this the rows will be exactly the same it's just that we had to place our stitches for this first row so for the next eight rows because this lace panel is worked over nine rows so for the next eight rows we're going to be working into the chain spaces so we've chained one and we've turned and we're going to go down into that first stitch and work a treble and then into the next one a treble we're going to chain one and we're just going to go down into that chain one space and work our stitch as usual pull through four leaving two and then we're just going to go down into that next chain space to finish off so yarn over down into that space yarn over pull through yarn over yarn over pull through so we've got our six stitches just like before pull through the four 
and then just pull through the three. That's the only difference and still chain two. So back down into that space that we just finished and work our next treble two together. Down into the next space. Pull through all four. Yarn over and pull through three. Chain two and you can see how that looks. So when you finish off one, you go back down to start the next, into the next, you finish it off, then you go back down, across, into the next. So you're always like sharing the chain space with the next stitch. And you just continue all the way along, working exactly the same. And when you come to the end, I shall show you what we need to do next. So I'm just going to the end of this row. And I'm just going to do this stitch really slowly for you, just in case you didn't quite catch it. So we've done our chain two and we're going to go back down into the same space. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Leaving two on your hook, yarn over, down into that next chain space. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, down, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through four, yarn over, pull through the three. Chain two, back down. And into that last chain space, that was our chain one space work the remaining part of your treble two together, yarn over and pull through and we're left with our two trebles at the end. So we're just going to chain one at the end and then going to finish off with the two trebles to finish off this row. And this is all we do now for the following well, nine rows in total. So we've got another seven more of the lace panel to do. So if you want to continue now working the lace panel until you've got nine rows completed, nine rows of this lace panel, and I will put obviously the instructions for each panel so you can uh, rewind and refer to the instructions too. So I shall see you at the end of this lacy panel. Right, so hopefully you've managed to do your nine rows of the lace panel and it should be looking something like this and we're joined by Geordie and we've got our joining panel and obviously we've got our bobble panel and then we've got our joining panel. So the joining panel, which is five rows, goes first, then we've got our 13 rows of bobble panel, then our five rows of joining panel and then our nine rows of lace panel. So we're going to continue on now and put our joining panel on. All the um, timings and the sections which show you how to do each panel for you to refer to and throughout this panel you're just going to repeat the panels so you have three bobble panels completed and three lace panels completed and you will have seven joining panels obviously one at the beginning and one right at the end and this is all you do so repeat the panels until you've got three of each so once you've completed this panel I shall see you somewhere near the end just so we can finish it off and then you just repeat it all again so you do two sides to the poncho and then once we've got both of our sides completed I will then show you how we're going to stitch it together and then do the lovely bobble edging. So I will put all the details for you for the rest of this tutorial so all you need to do is pause, rewind, find the section that you need, complete it until you've got all of your full panel completed. Enjoy!
Wow, guys, that was a bit of a mission, wasn't it? Completing those two panels. Anyway, here we are. Rome wasn't built in a day. So I hope you've got them both done okay. So obviously you do one panel and you do exactly the same for the second panel. You all should be looking something like this. I'm just going to quickly show you how to sew in your ends for those of you who don't know how to do that. So I'm just going to show you how to sew in one end just quickly. So I'm just going to pick. And you just literally get your darning needle, your thread, your darning needle with one of the ends that you've got. Well, you'll have quite a few or if you change colours like me, you'll have quite a few. And literally you just obviously thread the yarn through and you're just going to weave obviously I've got the two colours here so I'm going to weave this colour through obviously that colour so you just literally insert your, your needle and just thread it through and just gently pull that end through not too tight and then I'm just going to go back over on myself but I'm going to go over right because if I go back through it'll all come back out obviously so I'm just going to go over that one and then back through and that's how simple it is just to thread in your ends and I'll just trim off that I'll just show you how neat it looks so you can't even see on either side so if I can leave you to finish off all your ends and I shall meet you back here once that little task is done and then we'll go on from there okay so I've sewn in all my ends there we go and now ready to put the two panel pieces together don't worry if it looks a little bit wavy like mine it soon straightens out when you just pull it into shape and when you stitch it together you won't even notice um, so it's quite hard to show you overhead on the overhead camera but I will do my best I'm going to lay the first panel out so it's lengthways so if you lay your panel out lengthways and you've got your diamonds coming down and the diamonds and the bobbles are facing up so you've got your right side facing up so there's the one end all the way along quite long there's the other end so long ways facing up and then you take your second piece with right side facing down so your bobbles facing each other so the bobbles are going to go down and then you're going to I'm going to use these quilting clips just to keep the panels together but you can use pins or whatever's easier for you and I'm just going to pin the corners together on the first section so I'll just I'm just going to clip sorry them together so there's my corner and we want to make sure the top panel is going halfway over the second lace panel so there's the first lace panel second lace panel so we're going to bring the top piece over so it sits roughly halfway through this lace panel so there's our corner so I'm just going to line it up clip there and I know that's what I've got to work towards just move my clips about a bit just to make sure it's fairly even evenly spaced out stretch the top bit a bit more once you're happy with how you've got it clipped together I'm going to just literally sew along this seam all the way up to there and I'll just quickly show you how I start it off pick up the two corner points and obviously you can do this whichever way you're uh, comfortable with sewing in your sewing in along the panels I'm just going to secure this end so I know it's not going anywhere and then I'm going to sew over that end and I am literally going to over sew that's how I like to do it so I'll just just over sew and I'm going to catch that in and then again to the next piece insert my needle so I'm just catching the top parts don't 
don't pull it too tight and just work your way all the way along this is how I do it if you want to do sort of like a, a running stitch that way absolutely fine whichever way you're comfortable with this is the way I like to do it so I'll just do it this way so if you work your way all the way along sewing along sewing along and I shall see you somewhere here and then we'll finish off and then I'll turn we'll turn it over and I'll show you how to sew the other two pieces to make the poncho shape so you should have something looking a little bit like this so there's the back this is the top part like so so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the top part so we're going to put that down so that is now going lengthways so there's it right side up so that's the top bit we've just now put down on its back and it's going that way now and obviously the bottom bit that we had you can see the corner we've just stitched we are now just going to turn this around so this now becomes the top bit with the short side at the top we're just going to join it up like before but on this one we're going to go halfway along to the bobble panel so I'm just going to pin that there and like before we're just going to clip the two pieces together or pin whichever you've got and we're just going to sew this together exactly the same so we're just going to sew that up so if I leave you to sew it up just like we did on the other side pause the video and I'll see you when that's completed and you should have a poncho shape and then I'm going to finish off with the neck edging and finally at long last the bobble edging along the bottom so hopefully you've got both panels stitched together and you should have your poncho looking like this like a v-shaped neck and we're going to work around this neck next so I'm just going to attach my yarn it through and I'm just going to secure it with a little knot so I'm just going to insert my hook chain one which does not count as a stitch just gives me the height and then I'm going to go back down into that same stitch place there and yarn over and work a half treble so and then I'm just going to pick up evenly half treble all the way along so I'm just going to work two half trebles into the V point uh, two incomplete half trebles just to bring in that angle I don't want it too gapy so just insert and yarn over insert my hook yarn over and pull through yarn over I'm going to go down in the next spot yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through all of those on there and that just brings it in for that angle and I'm just going to work all the way along to the next point I'm going to do exactly the same there so working all the way along picking up evenly half trebles and I just pick them up by eye really so they're not too far apart and they're not too close together so just insert your hook sorry that was Geordie going past and just work evenly along doing your half trebles so if I leave you to do exactly the same as me working evenly along just insert your hook half treble down into the next and you know if it's even because it shouldn't pull or it shouldn't be rippled so obviously if it pulls you haven't got enough and if it ripples you've got you've got you're going in too often so I just literally yarn over naturally insert the hook naturally to the next spot I wouldn't go you know stretch across or go right close just yarn over and then naturally down and it seems to work for me yarn over naturally down so I'm just coming to that second V point there so I've just got a couple more half trebles this is the V point so I'm just going to insert my hook into the next space along not yarn over and pull through 
then yarn over down into the next space, yarn over, pull through, and then just pull through them all. And it just brings it in slightly for you. So yeah, so if I can leave you now to continue with your half treble all the way along the remainder of this side, and I shall see you somewhere around about here and we'll slip stitch to the top of that half, first half treble that we did to close this round. And we've only got one more round to do on the neck area. So pause the video and I'll see you somewhere around about here. And there is our first half treble. So I'm just gonna slip stitch to the top of that first half treble. And we're just gonna do one more round. So chain one, yarn over back down into that same stitch and work a half treble. And then there's our corner stitch that we did. So I'm just going to insert my hook into that stitch, do yarn over and pull through, then go down into the next one, yarn over and pull through. I've got five, and I'm just yarn over and pull through. Brings that angle in nicely. And then I'm just gonna work all the way around like we did before, insert your hook into the stitches that you've already created now. So if you want to continue on doing the second row exactly like we did the first row, I shall see you somewhere towards the end and we'll finish off the neck. Right, so we're going to move on to the edge and a bit of a warning, it is a bit of a beast because it's a long, long edge. But stick with it, it's worth it. Yeah, it is a bit of a mission, so maybe grab a coffee and or maybe go and have a rest <laughs> before we start because it is a long edging, but it's worth it. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna keep on with this color yarn. Find my hook, because it's disappeared somewhere. And again, with the front facing, so I'm just gonna swivel it around so the front of the work is facing. And it doesn't really matter where you start, but I like to start on the join area somewhere around about the join area so I'm just going to bring my yarn through right so we're just going to repeat basically what we did for the neck edging so just insert your hook bring it through chain one doesn't count as anything at all I'm going to go back down to that same stitch yarn over and work half treble yarn over and so just keep going all the way so I'm going to leave you to do pick up evenly along like you did for the neck and I'm going to join you when we get to our first V point. I'm just going to show you how I like to go around the V which is obviously going in the opposite direction to the neck. So I shall see you somewhere round about your first V point on the poncho. Right, so I hope you're still awake and you're not too tired. We're nearly there. Well, we're not really fibbing, but we're almost there. Well, we're not. Let's just be honest. But we will be there. So, here's the first point we came to. So, I'll just do a few more half trebles just to take me to that point. One more. Right, so I'm going into that point and I'm going to do a half treble and then I'm going to do another half treble in the same stitch. And then I'm going to do another half treble in that same stitch. And what that does is it brings the stitches around because if you didn't do that and you just went all the way around, it would pull your corner in. So now we can go on up to the next um, side. I'll just show you. I'll just do a few half trebles just to show you what that point looks like. There we go, and look, it's just it's just given a lovely, lovely crisp point. So when you get to your corner, do three half trebles in the same stitch, and that will give you that lovely effect. So I'm going to leave you now, and I'm going to finish off the rest of my poncho, and hopefully you're going to continue and do the rest of your poncho for this first round. Keep going, don't give up, and I shall see you at the the beginning of this first round and then we'll do our last I promise our last round which is a lovely bobble edging 
and then we will have our lovely autumn rain poncho complete so keep going and i shall see you pause the video and i shall see you at the beginning of this first round so hope you're still with me that was a long round wasn't it but here we are and there's the stitch marker so i know i'm at the end so i'm just going to take the stitch marker out and I'm just going to join to the top of that stitch with a slip stitch right so last round i promise we're just going to turn our work so if you just literally turn your work so the poncho wrong side is now facing you for this final row and we're just going to chain one which doesn't count as a stitch and then we're going to yarn over we're going to go down into that very same stitch and work four incomplete trebles so there's one two three and four so you've got five loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all five and then down into the next stitch with a slip stitch so down into the next stitch and slip stitch and then we're going to slip stitch into the next one and then slip stitch in oops and then slip stitch into the next one so slip stitch into the following three stitches after your bobble so let's just do that again into the next stitch let's work our bobble one two three four and yarn over pull through all five down into the next and slip stitch then slip stitch then slip stitch so three slip stitch continue on all the way around with the back of the work facing you so when you do finish and you turn it over you have your lovely bobbles showing to the front so I shall see you somewhere round about here where we're all absolutely worn out by then and we'll finish off and then we'll blow balloons and throw streamers and celebrate. So see you then. So I'm at the final, final part of this bobble edge and I'm just going to see how it finishes off. Obviously it all depends on how many stitches you picked up originally but don't panic because if it doesn't finish evenly it is not a problem so I'm just going to show you so there's my bobble so I'm just going to slip stitch one two and three and obviously it's not even but that's fine that's absolutely fine so whatever you you know wherever you finish uh, you could maybe only have two you could have four just squeeze it in or just adjust it slightly for your bobble it is not going to be noticeable so obviously i've only got two left so i'm just going to do my bobble into the next one so all you've got to do now sew in your ends and be totally proud of what you have made be proud of yourself and i shall see you on the other side so that is the autumn rain poncho i hope you managed to make it okay i'm going to pop a few pictures in of me wearing them both both what i've got hot on and the one that's on mabel the mannequin just to give you an idea what it looks like actually being worn i absolutely love it it is a bit of um it is a bit of a yarn monster i suppose it uses up quite a bit of yarn but i think if it's worth doing it's worth doing well and it is a really lovely warm accessory to wear in the autumn in the winter so it will keep you lovely snug and warm so if you wanted to go out without a coat on underneath it would it, it really would keep you warm I like both versions so I'm quite pleased with how they've both turned out and obviously I've made them in the colours that are going to complement my wardrobe so them well worn definitely throughout the, win the autumn and the winter. But it's so versatile so you can wear it either way so whatever, which, which, whichever takes your fancy I suppose but I think I prefer to wear it the front, you know, the straight way on. There will be a full PDF pattern as well which I will put in the... Um, comments box below so then you can download the pattern too because sometimes it's nice to have the paper pattern alongside you with the tutorial and it's nice to refer to as well if you're not you know front in front of the youtube all the time 
if you did like this video please don't forget to give me that lovely thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed well please subscribe if you want to be kept up to date with all my tutorials all my designs that I bring out and don't forget to hit that bell too then you'll never miss out on what I do when I do bring anything out so if you do appreciate what I do and if you wanted to maybe buy me a virtual coffee that would be absolutely lovely no pressure if you don't though because I love doing what I do but if you do I'll put the link for my coffee account in the box below too and then you just go over there and then you can just donate uh, a few pounds towards buying me a virtual coffee and all the money that's donated I will actually use to plough back into my Loopy Mabel crochet so to buy new wools and yarns and new crochet hooks and you know um, things for the camera all things like that towards my Loopy Mabel crochet channel so thank you so much if you do that but no pressure if you don't so I'm off now to work on on another design that I've been working on and it is halfway through so the next tutorial won't be as long as the last one I promise you and I love to read your comments so please leave your comments in the box below what do you think of this poncho wrap which way would you wear it would you wear it sideways on like I'm wearing it now here or would you wear it like the poncho way I'd love to know what you think too and what colour yarns would you go for if you were going to make it so let me know and then we can all share together you can also follow me don't forget over on Instagram Loopy Mabel but until the next time please take care and happy crochet